So instead of doing how to keep your grades or financial aid, I'm going to decide to kind of put everything into one. We call it financial aid one on one. Um, financial aid, financial aid is a lot of different variables in place as far as how to keep it, how to get it, you know, what you're eligible for. It is very complicated. So that's all we have us here. With us in the financial aid office, we're here to help you get the most aid, help you keep your aid, do whatever you can. So you know you have this funding for your education. Um, as far as financial aid, I'm pretty sure you already know how to apply for financial aid. FAFSA.gov. Um, FSA ID is what your username and password is for the account. Um, normally it's done every year for the next eight year. This year we start something new called prior prior year, PPY. What this is most most normally you'll be have January be the first day to complete your FAFSA. Now we're starting with October. So beginning well, next month, I guess October first and that's in a few days. So be in October 1st, you start doing your 17, 18 FAFSA. And that information is going to be based off the same information your 16, 17 FAFSA was based off. So this tax information is going to carry over to the, 7, to the 17, 18. The reason behind that is, um, I guess in the federal government, the, the, some studies show students can pass for earlier and or have a chance to, or more of a chance to get in classes, be successful, and at the same time, it may, just makes it easier. Uh, throughout the year, a lot of issues we do face are our students, parents not doing their taxes in time or doing taxes incorrectly and having to amend them. And at that point, you know, that'll hold you up for whole another semester. So, with this, you, you'll be doing your 17 18 FAFSA, get in October for your fall 2017 semester next year, spring, spring 18, and summer 18. So, with that being said, even though we're starting earlier, we aren't starting the verification process until normally around the same time. So there's a lot of guidelines to follow. You have to follow as far as verification, when to turn it in, when you should turn in the time. The only difference is FASTOs will be submitted earlier. So if you can submit it earlier, kind of chill, you know, it's going to be some time. So you have to worry about submitting it you know, after you go to Texas, then having to bring in the verification at the same time or a bunch of courses. So with this information, it'll be the exact same tax information, just parts of the updated verification worksheets. So any questions about the prior prior year? Okay. So with that, that's, that's fairly easy. So that's the biggest change we're introducing uh, with the FAFSA this year. Um, like I said, everything is kind of the same with our Pell Grant, our state grants, as well as our loans. Of course, the Pell Grant, if you're eligible, is a bit income-based. Um, family, dependents, who's in the household, all that's going to affect what you're eligible for. A lot of times we'll have students come in and say, hey, I make this income, you know, that I'm, I can't afford college. You know, unfortunately, it's, it's a government equation that they figure out what is considered enough to pay for college. Uh, sometimes it's not always fair, but we can do much about that. So while well, that may not be as fair, we do offer state grants. So the earlier you do your FAFSA, so for this one, for next year, it'll be October, the earlier you do it, you'll be able to qualify for these other grants that we have available. Then we have the Commonwealth Grant. If you're in state and those six credit hours, you qualify for up to the lowest I've seen, I think it's around $500 per semester. The highest I've seen, around $800 per semester. That's, that's a nice little grant you can use for tuition and fees. The federal SEOG. That's another grant that's roughly around $150. That's a fixed value, $300 per year. And the PTAP, you know, that's, that's more of a discretionary grant we offer to part time students who have higher EFCs. We kind of help them out with a lot of their costs. We want you to spend a you know, ton of money out, out of pocket for community college. So we have these grants. These help you reimburse you or help you determine your books at least. Um, so we have all these different things and measures in place for tuition. You know, Say if you're not eligible based on your parents' income, with the payment plan, that's rough around four payments. The earlier you do it, you, you have to put down I think it's zero percent down payment. You know, then as time progresses, it they increase from zero, then forty to sixty. Um, we have student loans available. We have the subsidized and unsubsidized and the parent plus loan. The subsidized means interest does not accrue while you're in school. Unsubsidized means interest will accrue. So while you're in school, so you have both of those out. 
the sub is kind of just sitting there, while the, the unsub is building the interest. Both of them have the same interest rate, which is 4.6%. The unsub, you'll be paying back that, plus the, principal, plus the interest that I've built up. So the principal, plus the interest that accumulated over the, the past years. Uh, even the parent plus loan, um, let's say you, your ABC was too high, you can't qualify for some loans, or the loan is not enough, out of state. The parent plus loan is a, it has a higher ceiling of what you can request. But the difference between that is higher interest rate, around roughly around seven percent, and the parent, you know, is kind of shares the debt with you. So student doesn't pay collections with both the parent and the student. So that's more of a risky loan, but it's there to kind of help. So that's what they're what they're funding. Um, scholarships available. We had the foundation scholarship. That's I want to say that's merit based. Captain Rice and Mike Raffer will have more information about that. I want to see that. And the other one, you have the tobacco, which is based on the tobacco regions, the ABC counties, Amherst, Bedford, and Campbell, I want to say. Those are, Amherst, those are ABC regions, those are Appomattox. Um, like I said, check with Captain Rice, I'm not entirely too sure. Those are ABC money. So those, a lot of times I've noticed those are full tuition fees, just not books. So if you call for one of those, get everything covered. We have the STEM one, science, technology, engineering, math, scholarship as well. So anything about that major gets you tuition and fees at least covered. Um, so we have the scholarship, and we also accept private scholarships. Um, I've seen in the past a lot of churches, um, companies, for them, bankers still, I know, gives a lot of funding for their students who are in their program. Pretty sure BWXT will get funding as well. Claire Abbott Foundation, not too sure about that. That's one of the other ones. So we have all of these that I gotta help you with your funding. And on our website, or check with us, the financial aid award guide, it kind of goes over everything that I've discussed as far as the process, what's available, it even mentions FASWA, which is you know, kind of another option that's more private, that's more you know, around the whole nation type scholarship search. You know, the company called Cola, Pepsi, that's all located on that. Those are kind of hard to get, honestly. But the award guide kind of goes over everything, what the return of grants are. You know, SAP, which I'm going to touch a little bit, and process. So, and there's also FAQ on the back of it, you know, some of the key terms we use. Financially, we use a ton of key terms, and that's kind of how, how we communicate. So, classes begun, your Brooks purchases, you generally get that in a full term semester, two, three weeks before classes begin. Fall is three weeks because, you know, the time period we have, and it's spring. Kind of short, it's like two weeks before classes begin, mainly because we're off for the holidays. So, you don't financial aid verification, you know, that's documents you're going to request. So, you know, always check that no matter where you go from, either it's us, university, you're going to have your verification email. We uh, verify two out of every three students. University is verified 100% of students. So, once the university, if you say, hey, you know, I haven't got my award letter in the mail, verification will probably hit you. And they'll, they'll send that, you know, universities will send that to you, your personal or private, check both of them. I'm uh, my personal, personal or school to be email, so check both of those. And once you get that, you know, they'll tell you what to bring in. A lot of times it's taxes, could be W-2s, uh, something called independent or dependent verification worksheet, depending on your status. It's kind of verifying income for the fact, so it's kind of clarify that information is correct. So it give you the, the actual, the official EFC estimated family contribution. Make sure that you're eligible for. So, you submit your FAFSA, you've submitted your verification, you've been approved, you got the award email, you purchased your books, now you're going to class. Um, normally, you, we have a, the census period. Census date is the last day to drop for refund, which is the same just the day as the drop. So, with the census, is if you attend a class, I think that's the week of class, normally a few days later on down the road uh, in that week. So the census date is right there. So within that time frame, you can drop your classes, you can swap, you all that with that time frame, it doesn't hit your account as a withdrawal or not. But if you do it after census, then you get a W. W is considered a withdrawal, doesn't affect your GPA, it just goes against your overall attempts. So your GPA remains you know, intact. Your patient ratio, which you know, we'll, we'll the sad when I go over that, is going to be hit by that. So you got a W, no biggie. With W, just kind of keep those very limited. Uh, with developmental courses, you'll get U's, which is the equivalent of that. 
it's either pass or fail, so you use. So he led to a, a limit. Um, so you hit senses, you draw for one course. Um, to say something happened, you know, a few weeks later, I want to hit it up all your courses. Make sure you speak with financial aid or advisor before doing that. Once the student withdraws from all the courses or fails all the courses, they become a return to Title IV student. Return to Title IV or RTT IV basically means we're going to reduce your financial aid based on your percentage of enrollment. Title IV is just another fancy word for federal aid. So RTT IV student, and based on when you withdraw, so I've seen students withdraw within right after census. At that point, they've only earned 19. They've done with 19 percent. Day, which is that's nothing. If you wait till later on, you know, up until before the date for the penalty, you may owe back 60%, which is a little better, but at the same time, you don't want that. And this, if you pass your last attempt of course, you can avoid becoming a return title for a student. But a return title for a student, that's, uh, I will not say it's a problem, but it's, it's a very common thing. So if something happens, you do become a return title for a student, don't think it's the end of the world. Throw some money back, no biggie. We do have any, some kind of overpayment contract. You know, we want you to stay in school and be successful no matter what. So if you don't pay the contract, what we do is we'll you know, surrender a portion of the refund for the upcoming semester to pay back what you owe us. You know, if, it, if it covers all of it, perfect. If not, you'll still owe another, the rest of it. Come in summer, I mean, we can do it again for summer. Um, and say if it was five years ago you came here, Go as money. The max you can pull back is only two hundred dollars. The federal regulations. That's the max you can pull back. So that would be the max. But you know, that's that's still something. So you say you drop all your classes. It's so like coming return to Title IV student, which is going to affect your SAP status, which is satisfactory academic progress. This this is almost an epidemic, honestly. Um, I've, I've, I'm a SAP advisor here, so I see a lot of these students. And with this. The rules are you have your 150% rule, that's his maximum completion. Uh, financial aid is only going to pay for 150% of a current program. So that is designed so you can get your program, get your degree, transfer to university. You know, the same rule applies to universities, 150% of their current program will share the university. So for us, let's say you're general studies, 60 credit hours. Financial aid is going to cover up to 90 credit hours of their program. So within that within that range, you have some so you have room for fails, something happens, withdrawal. So we want you to be successful. We don't want to put you on an strict an strict leash so you can go in courses. So we have we have that range, that third credit hour range for you to do this. And, and let's say you say you university, same exact rules gonna apply, you just you have 120 credit hours, so you have a higher ceiling for the 150%. Um, the other rule we have, the GPA rule. Uh, for GPA rule, if you get a C, honestly, every class you'll you'll pass and graduate. C will give you a 2.0 semester. For for our GPA rule, it takes once you hit 12 credit hours, that's when you get hit by it. So once you're in 12, 24 credit hours, you got to have a 1.5. Even with that, that's that's still very low. I mean, a D is going to be a one point to your GPA. Once you pass 25 to 47, you're at a 1.75. Still easy. But once you get above 40 credit hours, that's which is you getting down to graduation, you're on a path to that, 2.0 is the minimum. 2.0 is the minimum, you need to graduate anyway, so you have to get that 2.0. Like I said, if you get just all C's, every class, you're gonna get that. But of course, once you get higher, it just looks better, you transfer, you know, we'll be able to guarantee the mission, so the GPA is reduced in um, Virginia universities. So that's simple, I'm not really tired to show you. ODU is a three, normally after high school, I think it was like a 2.5 for the transfer. I could be incorrect. Um, transfer may should recommend seeing Emily Nunes, the transfer advisor. She can definitely give you insight more of that. Then the last SAP rule you're going to hit is the completion ratio. You have to pass 67% of your courses, two thirds of other courses. And you can always type that in yourself, look at your account, your unofficial transcript, and that will be past courses over at an overall attempted. You know, if you say U, a W, that's, that still counts as an attempted course. So all of those would be what you have passed. So if you had two thirds of all your courses, you can be the completion ratio. Then that, that's normally, that's the, that's the biggest killer with that, the completion ratio. Um, <coughs> withdrawals, the definitely, that's gonna bring that down. 
I've seen students with 4.0s and five sheets suspended because of that rule. So then they have the appeal. We do have an appeal process. Um, if something happened that semester, you can always shoot for an appeal. You need to get your know, financial sheet reestablished or probationary period. Um, with, the, with that, you know, just for that, you know, there you start off with a good standing semester. Then based on your grades, you know, you're good still good standing or you get the warning status. Warning status is red alert. You know, pass your courses when you get coming next semester. Don't fail. If you, if you fail, you might go back to suspension. If something happens and you hit warning, warning status, feel free to come by the financial office. You know, we'll go over you know that as well as scenarios for you to meet SAP again. And the, or worse than the worst, you can always do an appeal and from there see, we'll see what happens. So if that happens, you fill your courses, you know, there's nothing in the world. That's 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 this one and just you can still come back, contract option. So Say if you pass all your courses, you do well, you start passing courses, we do issue refund checks and financial aid award guy has the, the time frame roughly around six to eight weeks after the first day of class. The projects are mailed. So if you pass all your classes, you're doing well, you you get a refund check. The refund check, that is the leftover aid. So to say you have a thousand dollars left over from tuition fees and books, that's all sent back to you in the check. Nowadays we have the check option, direct deposit, and a credit and a card option, debit card option. Direct deposit, of course, can be the quickest option. Uh, so you get, you get, it's almost a reward for just being, just going to classes, passing, doing your thing, you get, you get a kind of a bonus for that. You know, every semester while you're in school, so, well, mainly community college, but the tuition rates are so low. So you'll get this a refund check, and it's, do whatever you want with that. Um, so like, um, like they apply financial aid to my classes, Well, six to eight weeks after the first day of class. Oh, six to eight weeks after the first day. Yeah, so around mid September, we start wrapping the process. Um, the spreading process, the spreading process is it's not as simple as most people think. I know you, students go around and say, hey, I would have so and so, this person's running away. It's not, it's not that it's not that simple. The spreading process, that's the whole process of us. We package it and make sure students are getting the correct amount. Um, you know, if we don't repackage your award, you get over the amount. And you're gonna owe us money. And, you know, it's, sorry. So that whole you know time frame where we're doing refunds, where we're repackaging, make sure students get the correct amount of awards. We may apply additional awards if you know if necessary as far as the pizza, which I mentioned earlier. If from there, you know, we originate to the federal government, it goes up to to the feds, it goes back down, it goes back up to them. If from there, we say the business office, hey, you have these students waiting, contact us. We got to verify some more information. If you're there, you can order the checks you know, from Richmond or direct deposit issue all from Richmond. So it's a it's kind of a long process. So it's not, it's not a one or two step two day process. The two step is it can span over a week or some change. So I have direct deposit set up. So I guess would you say like after the eight weeks that's when they deposited? Yes. Yeah, so um, this year we started kind of early. So we might get it around early October. Um, with direct deposit, you will get an email notification when it's on the way. So your student email account is when something's gonna pop up from, I wanna say, CBCC pay. You say, hey, repo check is on the way, direct deposit, you should get it so and so days, and in a few days from when they tell you to get it, so your bank account is there. And then it's your money. You pass your classes, courses, you know, that's your money. You do whatever you want with that. Um, just keep that. You know, you save it, put it in the bank, Spend it, you know, that's all you that's just kind of your reward for being successful in courses. Unfortunately, not it just because we, we issue money, you know, one semester, another semester, so we have to empty all that one semester, and the next semester, have to empty all those funds as well. Okay. It's not a bank account, it's pots that we going to be setting this as far as pulling down, drawing down, and issuing checks. So there's a lot of different variables in this, but the money is all yours. You can put it in a bank account if you want. So that's up to you to spend it. Um, if you are passing courses, yeah, that's when it's time. That's when money needs to come back to us. Or if you drop the courses. Um, the withdrawals, like I was saying earlier, you at a certain at a certain date, they are withdrawals, it still counts as an attempted course. But if you're in a late start session, for example, an eight-week session, second week session, those aren't withdrawals. They have a separate date to follow. These 16 courses have their census. 
AOV1 has their senses and two have their own senses. So the you know, 16-week course is that AOV2 courses, keep in mind that if you do drop those second AOV courses, then your AOV will get reduced based on the term. You know, full time, 12 credits and above, three quarters time, now to 11, half time, six to eight, then less than half time, one to five. You do pay for one credit hour based on your EFC. So you can't take one credit hour or every three credit hour for us, but we'll cover it. So you don't have to always be full time every semester. Um, honestly, that's, that's basically about it. That's the end of the day. So financial aid. Any questions? No. Nope. I appreciate it. Anytime, man.